Well, Aaron, welcome to the podcast. I am excited to really be meeting you today and to be introduced to your expression of compassion in the world. What I'd love for us to get into today is how your spiritual, uh, excuse me, your spirituality impacts your compassion. And then also how your history with your sports performance and all of that has led you to where you are today. So my first question is, is simple. It's, it's heavy, but it's simple. And that is, who are you and how do you define compassion? Well, who am I? Uh, that's the ultimate question, right? <laughs> uh, what I do in the world is um, I do a lot of spiritual teaching on YouTube, uh, hold workshops, um, I do master classes and uh, counseling and things like that. So that's kind of my, my function in the world. Um, but how I define compassion, you know, it's such a great question because to me, compassion is, is just another word for love. Um, or you could say, I think compassion is kind of the way love expresses itself in physicality. And so I think compassion for anyone has to start first with compassion for yourself. And, uh, one of my, one of my main spiritual practices, if not my main spiritual practice is forgiveness, um, forgiveness of self, forgiveness of others which is also another way of saying acceptance, accepting things as they are. And so I think if you practice, you know, being compassionate with yourself, you know, when you, when you mess up or <clears throat> when you don't meet your own standards or whatever, you have to be able to accept where you are in that moment uh, with all your imperfections and whatnot. And if you get in the habit of doing that with yourself, then that will naturally project itself out into the world. And when you see somebody else messing up, or being unconscious or what have you, then the natural reaction is that's just where they are right now. And I can understand that. And so to me, that's how compassion, um, how I use compassion for myself and how it then kind of flows out into my reality. And this has been Compassionate Las Vegas, the podcast. No, that was <laughs> so good. Like you gave us so much in that introduction. I, I am so appreciative that you said compassion is really another word for love. The forgiveness piece, which is acceptance, I think is huge. And just kind of putting that all in one ball really gets us centered, gets us present, and allows us to live in this world in a way where we don't harm others, including ourselves, and even entering into the space of recognition that others aren't really other. Exactly. Ramana Maharshi, have you heard that quote? I have not. They said... Um, they said uh, Ramana Maharshi is a famous Indian sage. Uh, and there's a story where his disciple asked him, sir, how, how can we best love others? And his response was, there are no others. Oh, goodness. I've, I've heard that quote, but yeah. I didn't know where it was from. So love that. Yeah. So how does this work then practically? Now, we're in the midst of a global pandemic and people are more anxious, more fearful, uh, more self-centered in a sense because we're, we're reverting back to a survival mechanism. How yeah. can we kind of interrupt that pattern in this moment? Great question. Um, I, I believe that compassion has to start with awareness, uh, being aware of, of what's, what's arising and what's happening. And so I think a great practice for anybody in this kind of a time with a lot of fear and, and strife going on in the world is you know, there's conspiracy theories, there's politics, there's all kinds of things that people are worried about. And um, some people are even protesting right now. So the world's kind of in a, a, a pretty chaotic state at the moment. And I think that the best thing anyone, any one of us can do to have compassion is simply observe our own reaction to what's going on, right? So if somebody's, you know, we see groups of people protesting uh, the quarantine. We're not going to stand for this. We have rights to be out in public as we want to. And then the reaction is, oh, these jerks, these idiots, they're going to spread the virus even worse and, and set us back. And so instead of getting caught up in that kind of a judgment, just observe your own reaction to what's happening, right? And if you find there is a judgment arising within you, then that's a moment of introspection, right? A moment of self-inquiry. Uh, why do I feel the need to judge them for what they're doing? Um, as most of us know, whatever I'm judging in another is a, a hidden aspect of myself that I'm judging. And so I need to find forgiveness for that part of me. And I think that's a little bit tricky, right? Because the whole concept of projection can get a bit confusing for people. 
because they sometimes people think that projection means, well, if I'm upset that they're protesting the quarantine and putting us all at risk, that you're saying that that means I protest the quarantine, right? Mm -hmm. And the important distinction here is that projection always happens on the level of cause, not effect. So the effect of these people's behavior is the protesting. But the question is, what's the underlying cause of why they're out in the street protesting? Probably they're really afraid of what's going on and they need to take action. They feel like they need to do something to alleviate their fear, right? Mm -hmm. And so maybe I'm judging them for their panicked reaction of protesting because part of me judges myself when I get afraid or panicked. And so I can look at that part of me and forgive it. And that's really how spiritual growth happens. It happens through forgiveness, self-forgiveness. Um, you could look at forgiveness as an act that reduces, it's an act that eliminates karma inside of you, which then reduces the need for experience in this dimension. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah. So like whatever karma I haven't worked out in myself, life will keep bringing more situations in, into my reality that force me to look at that part of myself. So the sooner I am to forgive myself for what I'm judging in another person, uh, the sooner I am to eliminate my need to have those experiences keep reappearing, right? So I think that's the best thing anyone can do right now is rather than getting caught up in the judgments and the fear and the anger and whatever is happening out there, just observe your own reactions to all of it and then look inside yourself and ask yourself if there's something in you that needs healing. Yeah, I think you bring up a really important point, which is people are responding in really the only ways that they know how. Yeah. If they're protesting, it's going back to that survival. How can we take control? What in this circumstance can I actually control or manipulate? How can I regain my sense of self-efficacy or sovereignty? How do I do that? Well, I can protest. I can, I can hoard toilet paper. You know, exactly. People tease people for buying all the toilet paper. But it was the one thing that they could do to make them feel secure. Right. So eliminating that judgment piece is huge. And I think that's how we bridge some of these gaps. One of the challenges we're having, so I'm based, of course, in Las Vegas, and we are impacted by this in a way that is unique to us because we are a tourist destination for the world. Right. And yet we're not as unique as we may think because people are feeling the same feelings mm -hmm. everywhere. So I, I love how you bring that out. Yeah, I totally agree. It's, it's a great time for all of us collectively to, um, it's, it's, I think it's almost like mother earth has, has done this to bring up a lot of our collective unconsciousness to the surface, like the hoarding that's been going on. It's like, you know, the first couple of weeks of quarantine, you go to the grocery store and you can't find toilet paper. You can't find food. Um, first I couple actually, weeks, I couldn't find it yesterday. I still probably <laughs> right. Um, you got to strike gold somewhere to get toilet paper. And, uh, you know, I actually, um, my girlfriend and I got sick as soon as quarantine started. We got uh, bronchitis, a really bad case of bronchitis. So we have all this phlegm. We have, we're coughing like constantly. And we're go we go to the store to try and find cough syrup. And the entire, all the shelves are empty of cough syrup because everyone's assuming they might get the coronavirus and trying to wow. get ahead of it. And, you know, cough syrup won't even help you with coronavirus, but they didn't know that at that point. They're just doing whatever they can, like you said, to alleviate their fears. And so that was a moment for us, you know, that we, we got a little bit judgmental of like, what are all these morons doing, hoarding everything? Don't they understand that this is a detriment to society? Like, just take what you need. And if we all take what we need, we'll all have enough. Mm -hmm. um, and then that caused us to go, all right, you know what? We're resisting this whole experience and just creating suffering for ourselves. Why not just have compassion for the world in this moment? Yeah. And that's, that's it. Have compassion for the world. Now I'll admit that can be a challenge when you have to inject yourself with a shot for survival. When your medical need dictates needing alcohol pads and you see someone with 10 carts of them right, just right. because. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's one of those struggles that I think spiritual practice helps us to, to develop in and to, not be as fearful, not adopt that lack mentality, recognizing mm -hmm. that all things are happening exactly as they should be. Yeah. And we're just walking this script out. And in the end, it's all good. It's you know, all that's, good. That's what people have to recognize. And I think you've done a great job with teaching that 
uh, talking about the law of one and you know some other things that you you've talked about i want to kind of dive into how it is we can embrace our interconnectedness and yet still enfold i'll say this american ideal of individual liberty are they at odds are they compatible how does this work yeah great question i feel like that's kind of uh the next era we're all moving into um, because of the rise of, of certain technologies like the internet, like, uh, you know, video conference uh, applications like we're using right now to have this conversation. You know, I'm in Colorado, you're in Las Vegas, but here we are chatting it up like we're in the same room. So there's a lot of technology available to us now that, that has kind of forced us to become aware of our interconnectedness. You know, in the, in the past, there's been lots of pandemics, right? Um, all around the world, but we didn't have the uh, internet back then to to see and, and observe the suffering of those people across the other side of the world. It was just sort of like uh, he said, she said, right? Yeah. And so now that we do have this technology, we have TV, internet, we can connect with anyone anywhere in the world, we can watch anyone in the world, and it's kind of forcing us, I think, to realize that we really are all connected, we're all in this together, and the more divided we want to become, the more we all suffer as a consequence. So I think one of the, um, you know, the, the beauty that will come out of these ashes, so to speak, of the coronavirus pandemic is that it's really uniting our planet in a profound way that's never happened ever on, in the history of this planet. So, um, there's a lot of variables that have come together, like I mentioned, and I think that it's, when you look at it from a, a zoomed out perspective, it's kind of a marvelous thing that's going on that uh, you know, source intelligence has put together for us to kind of catapult us into um, what I refer to as fourth density, which is a term from the law of one. Uh, fourth density being kind of the next stage of human consciousness. And fourth density is simply the, the density of love, the density of harmony and unity. And so previously we've been in third density for a million or whatever years, which is the, uh, the density of self-awareness. So becoming aware of myself as a separate in individual entity, and that caused us to create wars and tribes and genocide and every atrocity anyone's ever committed in the world has been the result of that. And the contrast that's created for us, seeing all this war, all this violence from the separation, has now begun to cause us to see that maybe unity is a better option than that, right? Maybe if we come together, we can make a beautiful world and I think that certain events like this, unfortunately, kind of have to happen to wake us up to this fact, or at least speed up the process, that uh, the sooner we unite, the, the better and the more we can accomplish. And so I think it doesn't really matter what you're talking about in terms of government or economy. Um, I believe personally that all of it will function dramatically better when we become cohesive and, and harmonized with one another, rather than this kind of dog-eat-dog -dog world we've been living in.